Great. So hello, thanks for introducing me. Um, the title of my presentation is User Interface Design and Evaluation in the Context of Digital Humanities and Decision Support Systems. Um, so who we are, basically a member of the Cognitive Science um, Group uh, section at the Institute for Knowledge Technologies at the uh, Graz University of Technology. Uh, most of my colleagues are psychologists. I have computer science background. Uh, basically, we are involved in uh, technology-enhanced learning, cultural heritage, security research, and a specific focus lies on evaluation of um, systems uh, in several uh, fields, including digital heritage uh, fields. So. Uh, this slide gives an overview of what I'm going to present. Uh, the focus lies on the evaluation and especially on evaluation framework and evaluation principles and in addition on design principles uh, for digital libraries. And I'm going to explain this on the example of the cultural system. Um, so the beginning of the presentation uh, will be about the cultural system and the co uh, collections um, used by the cultural system. So starting with the collections, uh, we have two different collections, the 1641 depositions and the IPSA collections. Uh, uh, 1641 depositions, so um, these are documents about the Irish rebellion against the English settlement in, in Northern Ireland. and. The Irish uh, started a rebellion against the uh, English uh, settlers and committed a lot of, of uh, murders, imprisons, uh, crimes. They banned them from the home and so on. And the British uh, documented uh, in detail what exactly happens. So they wrote uh, witness documents uh, with information about who committed crime, where it happened, where it happened, when it happened. Uh, what exactly happened. And these uh, documents are now uh, donated to the uh, library of the Trinity College in Dublin, and they are very valuable source for, for research, especially for historians and, and um, linguistic uh, researchers. Uh, there are some more information on this. Um, Collections. The other collection used by the Kultura system was the IPSA collections. Um, the IPSA collections are uh, a set of, of illuminated manuscripts, manuscripts with pictures, um, and they are especially interesting because they uh, document a start of empirical research in Europe because um, it was the first time that um, Books was not only translated from ancient Greek and Roman uh, sources, but um, also um, the, uh, the, the writers tried to uh, do empirical research and they looked into nature, what exactly is there, not just uh, translating the text. So we can see two examples uh, with some plants and these examples show that uh, the writers uh, put their own uh, paintings. They're not coming from ancient documents. Now the Cultura project was, uh, this was a research project on the international level funded by European Commission. Uh, Trinity College in Dublin, the computer science section was leading this project. And the vision was to create a um, uh, research environment uh, to support the work of, uh, dig uh, by, done by digital humanities researchers. Um, one aspect of this uh, project was to create the linguistic pipeline. So I think we have seen this somehow yesterday. Uh, so starting with the original documents, uh, a transcription was made. This was already made before the project. And then the project was about the normalization uh, of the transcriptions. So putting the old 
English language into a modern language and unifying the names of the actors and the locations. Um, then after the normalization, the information extraction um, was about to extract all the relevant entities, so which are the, the actors, the locations, the, the dates when it happened. And based on this uh, information, a social network could be established. Um, so it could be shown um, and extracted which uh, person acted on which location and what happened there. Uh, based on this information, a, a large graph could be established. We can see this in the image here. Uh, the goal of the cultural system was to provide personalization to the researchers, so using this information from the extracted uh, entities and uh, having information about the users, uh, personalization and adaptation could be provided. So it was possible to provide specific recommendations to the individual users. Um, this slide shows an overview of the user interface. So we can see uh, in the middle the transcribed text. So it's not the normalized text, but the transcribed text. And in the blue box, um, this is the normalized text um, from the selected uh, text in the orange box. So this was a specific aid for especially student uh, investigators who got help to understand the ancient English text. Uh, there was a search functionality and an annotation functionality. And in addition, bookmarking was possible and people could browse through other texts, so I don't have an image for that here. Uh, on the right side, uh, all the extracted entities of this selected text were shown and recommendations of similar texts uh, were shown. So recommendations especially um, were based on, on this social network graph that um, documents with, with the same actors or same locations could be recommended. There was also a visualization tool, so the extracted entities uh, were shown in this kind of, of circle or wheel, and the relations between these entities uh, could be explored in this way. Now, regarding evaluation, this was uh, the work of my group, my colleagues and myself. Um, so what we wanted to do is to, uh, to evaluate the overall system, how well it is uh, designed, how good is it for the individual users, and um, get, getting more information on, on technologies and, and problems. So they generate the spe uh, specific goals of evaluation in ICT information technology is to demonstrate the added value of a technology and to identify potential problems and give advice for, for improvement. Uh, justifying an investment and allowing comparison with other technologies. Um, usually this uh, evaluation is guided by the very simple basic questions, how good is it, uh, why is it bad, or which one is better. So this is the simplified version of what is above. So having this in mind, we try to uh, elaborate a systematic approach for evaluating a digital library. Um, I'm going to present now some, some aspects of this overall framework. Um, the first aspect is the evaluation phases. So evaluation doesn't start at the end of the project when everything has been developed, but it starts with the requirements analysis that defines also the evaluation questions. So having the requirements defined, it uh, tells what should be evaluated then. The formative evaluation is an evaluation during the uh, development process, and it's uh, mainly meant to detect some problems and to provide improvements for the development. The summative evaluation is, to, is the evaluation at the end, and it's meant to uh, uh, verify the quality. So there's a, a, a 
pictures, we got uh, an analogon, a cook who is testing a soup, is, the, is doing the formative evaluation, and the gas is doing the summative evaluation. Um, evaluation process, so this is um, in order to plan the evaluation, we're following a three-step process. So first is planning, then carrying out the evaluation, and then having the results and doing the work with the results. So planning includes uh, to, uh, to be clear about the purpose of the evaluation, uh, having the stakeholders in mind, not, not the user groups, but the stakeholders who are interested in the results of the evaluation, then defining the evaluation, evaluation questions, so what should be evaluated, and defining the uh, evaluation plan and methodology, so how should the evaluation be done. Carrying out means to conduct the evaluation and to collect the data, and working with results includes the data analysis and providing reports on the evaluation. So this is the evaluation modeling uh, we developed in Kulture. Um, the three um, uh, rectangles uh, are the main entities. So we have the system, the user, and the content. And the evaluation uh, question evaluation uh, questions, what should be evaluated, uh, are formulated around this axis. So for example, the use and the relation between use and system uh, uh, puts the question about use acceptance and usability. The axis between use and content um, puts the question on the usefulness of the content. And the axis between system and content uh, in this case, is, uh, uh, asks for normalization quality and network quality. Uh, all of them together uh, puts the question about adaptation quality, visualization quality, and collaboration support. So these are the main evaluation questions we um, identified in the Kultura project. Um, the evaluation instruments, so this is how should the evaluation be done. So what we, we have done is uh, having questionnaires, traditional questionnaires after the usage of the system. Then we had questions during the usage of the system. And we used uh, tracking uh, information of the user when they interacted with the system. So in this way, we, could, we had a multi-model uh, evaluation approach. So we had continuous and non-continuous evaluation. Non-continuous is evaluation after the usage, and continuous is uh, evaluation during the use of the system. And invasive and non-invasive evaluation. So invasive evaluation means that the user is asked, so the user has to think about what uh, he's doing and, and how he, he or she perceived the system. And non-invasive information means that we just collect data and use this data without disturbing the user. So user groups, we had uh, a broad spectrum of user groups to identify the, the system quality. Um, we had professional researchers, so historical researchers mainly, then apprentice investigators, so these were history students, then we had informed users. Um, for example, the members of the um, uh, Center for Information Modeling uh, participated. And we had members of the general public, so for example, researchers of other fields. So this gives an overview of the different uh, user trials we uh, conducted. So we had the, the IPSA collections and the 1641 collections separately and together. And we did user trials with uh, different user groups, the professional, the uh, public, uh, general public, and so on. And we had uh, two different evaluation strategies, so the short-term uh, short evaluation and long-term evaluation. The short-term was mainly task-based, so the users got the task to do uh, in about 30 minutes or about an hour. And the long-term uh, evaluation included some uh, uh, several weeks where users just explored and worked with the content. Now, technical support, one uh, main uh, part of this uh, evaluation 
was to develop a system that supports this type of evaluation. Um, and all the aspects I mentioned before were covered by the system. So it's called Equalia. And the system provided uh, support for um, user-centric empirical evaluation. Uh, the whole evaluation process was supported. A multi-model data collection was supported. Uh, continuous, non-continuous, invasive, non-invasive evaluation was provided. So this gives an example. Um, in the, we see the user interface again, and in the red boxes, um, there are small questions, uh, and the questions were depending on what the system showed. So for example, the visualization, uh, the visualization we see, there was a question, how good is the visualization? How useful is this visualization for your purpose? And during the usage of the system, the user could uh, provide a rating and give some comments, feedback. So this was the uh, evaluation during the use of the system. Um, then we had, uh, we tracked the interaction. So every time a user uh, used a, a functionality of the system, uh, we tracked this usage. And at the end, we had a, uh, a quality provided a questionnaire. This is, I'm skipping that. So the, the interesting part of that is we had questionnaire judges. These are the questions during the use of the system and the sensors. The, these are the interaction data, the log data. And we could combine this data and provide a holistic uh, um, analysis of the collected data. So for example, if somebody rated the visualization very good or very bad, but uh, the same person did almost not use the visualization, is different from a person who used it uh, very often. So we could uh, provide weights on the, uh, on, the, on the ratings. So the automatic reports are provided by Qualia. Uh, this is just a snapshot on the, on the results. So we had, have the uh, results for each of the, of the qualities I presented before. So the, use acceptance, uh, content usefulness, uh, visualization quality, and so on. And the different colors means the different phases. So there was a baseline evaluation before the start of the project with a baseline system. And then uh, phase two was the formative evaluation, and phase three, the summative evaluation. And we can see that the, the ratings uh, were of the final system were higher than during the uh, development phase. Um, I'm skipping that. So there's a video of this uh, evaluation approach and the qualia on YouTube. I think the slides will be available afterwards. Then um, just a quick words regarding design principles. So um, I'm switching to two projects that are not in the field of cultural heritage, but we can learn in the field of cultural heritage from this uh, work. So for example, a self project is about decision support system for emergency management. So it's an information system providing information about uh, emergency cases. And what we're doing is uh, to develop some design principles in order to support the emergency managers. And there's a specific need that the emergency managers uh, perceive information very quickly and also under stress. So we make use of Gestalt Psychology. Gestalt Psychology investigates the human perception. Um, we see some examples here. So in the, the left one, uh, most people perceive this immediately as, as a house or some symbol, as a symbol. Then the next one, uh, it's called focus point. So I think everybody sees an orange person immediately. Um, the next one is a figure ground. So we can see two different you can see uh, in, in the middle uh, a pot and on the sides faces. Um, then the next two, uh, these are similarities and proximity uh, principles. So we can see grouped information, grouped dots and grouped lines because of the same attributes, colors, or because they are close to each other. And, and having this in mind, we can formulate some uh, design principles that could be used or should be used in a, in a system, so if information uh, uh, should be uh, 
related to each other, then we can make use of this design uh, principles, the proximity and the similarity principle, for example. In order to test if this is really true, we prob uh, did an online uh, study. So there was a task with some principles applied and people had to do this under stress. So there's time, uh, there was a time bar. It was, uh, people had not a lot of time for that. And it turned out that um, if information was arranged uh, using these principles, then the people could answer more quickly and more accurate. So the um, right answers were, the weight of right answers were higher. Um, we can also use this information for, so coming back to the cultural system, um, having the, the entities on the right top corner, uh, we can see that there would be room for improvement to arrange the entities uh, in a better way. So having uh, groups of, of actors and groups of locations and so on. Also the recommendations could be arranged in a much better way. So the other one is the Valkyrie project. It's about the visual analytic system for criminal analysts. So I'm coming back to the, to the crimes. Um, we are uh, involved in the development of a system that supports analysts to uh, understand where crimes happen and where are similarities between crimes. And what we are doing is to uh, define some design principles that investigators can uh, better understand simul similarities between crimes and, and, and better work with uh, crime information. And what we, another problem is, the, is confirmation bias and how to avoid it. The confirmation bias is, a, is the problem that people ignore information that contradict their previous beliefs. And what we think is that if we provide different visualization techniques and multiple views, uh, that this would uh, support to mitigate such a confirmation bias and also support um, the investigator in, in the sense-making process. Um, there's an example. So this is the same information provided in different ways. So we have, in the, we have a map view and a time view. In the middle, there's the map, and, and the circles are the, is the time. And we have different levels of, of detail and uh, different levels of uncertainty. And, and the hypothesis is now that if people got this different kind of, of visualizations of the same information, that they get, uh, that this helps to better understand the information. And this could also be applied, or could have been applied in the cultural project. There's only one type of inf uh, visualization, and there would have been room for more and more sophisticated information. So I'm at the end. Are there any questions? <laughs>